Hello, my name is Emma Berry and I'm an e-learning developer and instructional designer. And today I'm going to walk you through how I created my morph transition activity for Storyline. So the first thing you need to do before you even get anywhere near Storyline is actually do all your prep work in PowerPoint. So what I did was create this vector illustration and this is going to form my activity. So I've got these four planets here and my idea is that I want the learner to jump between these planets and at each planet they're going to be challenged on a question around space. So what we need to do is actually prep that in PowerPoint using the morph transition. So I created my slides here and as you can see what I've done is just pull this vector in, uh, and illustration to be bigger so that it is zooming or appears to be zooming in each planet. So we've got this one and then we jump to the next one and if I zoom out you can see I've moved this illustration around the slide to get the effect that I want. Now you can play around with this until you get kind of your desired effect, dependent on what your transition is for or what your activity is going to be. And then back to the end um, again. So it kind of comes like a full circle. So once you're happy with how your transition is going to flow, um, you then need to export your slide to slide transition as mp4 videos. So the best way to do this was I copied out two slides at a time onto a new PowerPoint deck, exported them as an mp4 and that was my first clip and then did the same with clip two to three, that was my next clip, three to four and so on and so forth until you've exported all of your transitions into little mp4 videos and these will only be two or three seconds long. Once you have all your mp4s you can then jump into Storyline and start building the fun stuff. So let's go. Okay so once you've got your media prepared and um, you've got all your video clips we can start to build this activity using our transitions. So you need to get yourself a blank slide and import your first video clip. Now you want your videos to be set to play when triggered because we want to have control over when and how our videos are playing. So you will rely heavily on the timeline to create this effect and to create this activity. So you'll notice that I'm using cue points and animations to determine when certain things are coming in and out of the slide. So the timeline plays and allows for our welcome message to come in. And then once that's appeared, we have a cue point, which then pauses the timeline. Now what this does is allows the learner to read this message before it then fades out because as the video plays and we transition to the next layer, we want these items to fade out nice and seamlessly um, with the transition. So that cue point pauses the timeline, gives the learner a chance to read the text, and we've got this hot spot here, and this is gonna act as our trigger to then move the learner to the next layer. So the learner will then click this hot spot as directed by the text, and this will then resume the timeline on the slide and it will also start to play the video. So if we drag our timeline across, you can see our text box fades out, our dotted line fades out, and we zoom in on our first planet. Now, once this um, video has finished playing, it's only a couple of seconds long, it, I've then got a trigger that will automatically jump to the next layer. So if we go to our next layer, we've then got our next video clip. So it's important to set your layers as hiding the base layer. And on your next layer, you then import your video second video clip. And this video clip should start where your other one has ended. So you can see they are exactly the same. And then once again, you wanna keep your video paused or not playing when the timeline starts on this layer. And using cue points, we can allow for our elements to fade in. So in this instance, it's a question with some buttons. And then 
we can reach the cue point to kind of pause everything and give the learner a chance to answer the question. Then when they click submit, they then get their little feedback box and their feedback appear. And then once the learner clicks this arrow here, it will then resume the timeline again. It resumes the video and the same pattern. Once the video completes, we then jump to the next layer. So with this feedback box here, this is set to come in via a motion path once the learner clicks submit. And it's also controlled by states. So we've got a correct and an incorrect state. And based on the answer the, the uh, learner chooses, base determines what state appears when this box comes in. And motion paths are really great for this kind of activity and transition because you can be a bit more specific about when they come in and out without having to just rely on the timeline. So again, once the learner clicks the arrow, the video plays. So if we drag the timeline, we can see the video playing. These two boxes then come out and leave the slide via motion paths at the same time as the video is playing. So it looks nice and seamless. And then we jump to our next layer. And once again, this layer begins where the other one left off. So you can just repeat this pattern of adding in any bits of interactions that you want. So this is another question where they choose the correct planet. They click submit, their feedback appears um, based on whether they got the answer right or wrong. And the arrow icon then jumps them to the next layer, resumes the timeline, plays the video, and they go to the next part. You can see we've got multiple cue points to just keep everything nice and seamless. And then when you get to the end, you can just use a still image, um, which is what I've done here. And I've added these little flags to kind of denote that they've visited each planet. I've also added a kind of little end message and a try again button so that you can reset this slide back to the beginning um, if they want to as well. And it's that easy, really. Just rely on very short video clips, multiple layers. You can use states for feedback and your timeline and cue points are really important for ensuring that your any other kind of added elements on top of the video come in and leave the slide seamlessly with the transition as well.